Hi, and welcome to Rocker Room. I know it's been a while, you guys, boys and girls, since I've been with you, but I've had a lot of, a lot of ouchies. See, I have a sore foot here. Can you see that? And it's really been kind of sore, and but I'm getting everything taken care of. And I just wanted to read you your story and put your cartoons on. Because I know when I was a little girl, we had, I looked forward to Saturdays. It was always so much fun, you know. And when my kids were little, they used to love it. We used to call it Snuggle Buggle Day. And we used to have breakfast in bed and watch all these great cartoons. And I know Cartoon Network still has them. But if it weren't for them and Nickelodeon, which I also love, um, and you can see some great shows um, on Nickelodeon as well on Rewind. Um, I love Hey Arnold. I even had the socks just like Ren and Stimpy and all that. Um, and it's a great show. It really is. And Doug was good because they reminded me of me when I was little. I kept a journal. We didn't have computers then. And Arnold, I'm kind of like Arnold in that I was always the one that people came to to ask questions and things like that. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, the story that I've picked for you tonight is called Gentle is the Night. Okay. And this book is by Kat Michaels. And she lives in upstate New York with her family. And she is an advocate for children's causes. Do you know what an advocate is? I am an advocate too. That's someone that really cares a lot about people and issues. And an advocate for children means they really care a lot about you. And I think that says a lot about an author because, well, you're the future, right? Yeah, so if they don't abdicate for you, who will learn to, you won't learn anything if you don't watch, right? And she is helping to raise money to benefit any organization involved with the welfare of children. I'm going to have to talk to her. Maybe we can get her on the show because I write books too. I don't know if you know that. I have written a few. And do you remember the little boy that lost its tooth? Remember I said I put in a good word for you with the tooth fairy? Well, we did. She, We happen to be really tight with her here. And um, she said you were just a great kid. So she left you something really special under your pillow. But she said, for, I couldn't tell you. So, okay, but she said you were just terrific. But don't go taking, trying to get rid of two more, too many more teeth just to get more money, okay? You want to keep those teeth. Okay, so anyway, we're going to start off with Gentle is the Night. And I do have a story that she left for you, and I'm going to read that to you next week, okay? Because I haven't forgotten about you, okay? So this is Gentle is the Night. Gentle is the Night. The day has quietly fled. Gentle is the Night. The time has come to rest. The bunny is in his den. The robin in her nest. And see, those are where a lot of different animals and birds sleep. And here's where we come to what we were talking about. The moon has come to play with stars that fill the sky. See, there's a fairy. They dance beneath the moonbeams and wave the day goodbye. Gentle is the night. Hush, don't make a sound. See that? There's the fairy. The fairy of the evening soon will be around. Her dream dust 
she will share with sleepy little eyes speeding through the night in owl's wings she flies. See the owl giving her a ride? Isn't that nice of him? Isn't that a beautiful owl? Owls are what we call nocturnal. That's a really big word. But all it means is that they sleep when it's, uh, they like to sleep at different times. Okay? And nocturnal is some people sleep during the day and some people sleep at night. And the same thing with animals. And that is what nocturnal means is that they sleep during the day and they're up at night, which is probably why where we got the expression night owl from. Think? I think so. Gentle is the night. The crickets play their song. The air is filled with harmony and frogs will sing along. There's a cricket. See? Actually, crickets... And the frog singing. Actually, crickets are musicians. And they do make music. You'll hear sometimes the sound outside. And somebody will say, oh, that's a cricket. And they do make that sound. And they make the sound by rubbing their legs together. And they are very, 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 very... Uh, sweet thing. So if you find them in your house, throw them outside. Don't kill them. They're very they're very lucky to have around. And they don't cause any harm or any allergies. So just put them back outside. Mom hums a lullaby like the cooing of a dove to her sweet adoring little ones who fills her life with love. See, now there's, look at the birdie. There's the mommy bird with her birds. And see, there's the mommy with her little boy or her little girl. It could be either. And there's a teddy bear. It doesn't really matter if you're a girl or a boy. It makes no difference, really. We're all the same. Gentle is the night. Tomorrow is on its way when the sun will rise with the gift of a new day. And that's always true. So if you have a bad day, and we all have them, just remember that no matter what happens, the next day will always be better. And when you drift off into dreamland, that's a chance for you to write in your sleep. Sort of. Because you can sort of close your eyes and think of a story. And who knows, maybe you'll keep dreaming about it. Then when you wake up, maybe you want to keep a piece of paper next to your bed. And you can write about it. Okay? Um, there's, see, that's a dragon that they're riding on. See? And there's a little boy with his teddy bear. And that is, of course, a fire engine in the background. Um, filled with peace and love, may all your dreams come true. Sleep soundly, oh, my little one, and all my love to you. Now, see, there's the fairy. And I wonder, and I wonder if that is the tooth fairy. I really don't know because, you know, when... I say we're tight with her, but she never really lets us see her too well. It's always pretty dark. She likes to keep a low profile. And there's the mom saying goodnight. Fairies really do. They like to keep a low profile. They don't really like us to bother them or see them. And if you do see them, leave them alone. They, It's like animals. They People, until... They don't know us, and we don't know them. And until you get to know people, you really don't want to approach them yet. You know, it's because we could be we could scare them as much as they could scare us. Okay, and this is the book. It's called Gentle is the Night. The story is by Cat Michaels. 
okay? And I am going to speak to her because I like anyone that's an advocate for people and especially for children. And um, I will tell you, when I was a little girl, I used to love to write and read. And I won a contest at, I think I was, I might have been five. I'm not sure, maybe four and a half. And it was a Kellogg's box. And it was Kellogg's Corn Flakes. And they still make them. And they're still good. And I remember I was reading the box of the cereal because back then, again, no computers. And I was always reading. And you really couldn't read at the table, but nobody could fault you for reading cereal boxes. You know, that was a way to get around these things. I shouldn't probably tell you this, but... Anyway, I was looking at the cereal box and I was reading it. And in the cereal box, on top, it said, Help Yogi. You know Yogi Bear where he goes, I'm smarter than the average bear. And he has his picnic basket. And hey, boo-boo. That's um, Yogi Bear. Well, anyway, I used to watch him, too. And I always loved cartoons. And I would sit there and watch him. So anyway, he was on the back of the cereal box. So naturally, I read it. And what was he doing? Well, this time he wasn't stealing a picnic basket. It's really picnic basket, but he can pronounce it any way he wants. I don't I don't think it's nice to make fun of people the way they talk. I mean, some people come from different areas. Some people pronounce things differently. And I'm kind of a live and let, let live person. And I think that's a good way to be. Don't you? I think so. And um, it would stop bullying. And I know none of you do that. And I certainly don't. And I don't like bullies. I don't think anyone does. And I don't even think they do. I think that a lot of them are really um, in a lot of pain. And that's why they do that. It's no excuse for it because it's still terrible. But some maybe you try to be friends with them and see. If not, well, you gave it your best shot. Don't Don't let them take advantage of you either. But see if maybe that's it. You never know. That's sort of what being an advocate is, you know? If not, maybe you could talk to someone about about them and maybe they could do it. If not, well, then you did your best. And you know that you are, you did, it'll make you feel good that you did something, even if it didn't work. No, nothing works out perfectly every time. But as long as you try your best and as long as you do your best, that's all that matters. And no one's perfect. No one can do everything perfectly. And as Mr. Rogers used to say, you're perfect, you're special, and you're perfect just the way you are. And he was right. He absolutely was right. And he also used to say, I like to take my time to do things right. I do too. I don't like to rush. And uh, rushing causes people to forget things and get upset. So take your time. Don't rush. Don't let people rush you. You know, it's um, take your time. It's important. It's you don't have to rush around. Things will still be there waiting the next day or whatever. And if you don't feel well and you need to uh, stay away from people for a while, that's what you do. I know it's hard sometimes, but that's the right thing to do and the considerate thing to do. And sometimes people, even adults, aren't all that considerate. But it doesn't make it right. And... Um, I think that a lot of people need to learn that. So, um, uh, anyway, what was I? Let me get back to the story about Yogi Bear on the cereal box. So, it was how he got, how did he get across the water without getting stung by bees? Because he was getting honey. Well, I wrote 
something. I don't recall exactly. I mean, that's going back more years than I'd like to admit. But um, so I'm not going to tell you the number. My number is unlisted. But anyway, it's um, it's quite a while ago. But I do remember telling, saying, writing something about how he should go in the water because bees don't like water. And I certainly didn't want them killed. And you don't want to kill them now because they're, we need them. Bees are very important to uh, our food supply. And the fact that they're almost extinct is almost impossible for me to believe because there were so many of them. Um, so please don't, don't swat them or anything. They're harmless. They will not sting you. Because if they sting you, they die. So they don't want to. If you tease them or threaten them, they probably will. So don't do that because that's never a good thing. And you're provoking someone to do something that you wouldn't want someone to do to you. So don't do that. Okay. And I know you won't. Because I know everybody on Rocker Room is just so sweet. Okay, so... In, to finish it off, I sent the letter off and I got about uh, uh, maybe two or three weeks later a letter from Kellogg's saying that I was the grand prize winner and I was so excited. And my prize was a almost as big as me stuffed Huckleberry Hound. And I was so thrilled. That was, I told my daddy that, look, my, tro my first trophy. And he said that it probably wouldn't be my last. That's sweet. I had such a great mom and dad. Um, but whether it is or not, it was certainly a great first. Thank you again, Kellogg's of Battle Creek, Michigan. I was absolutely thrilled. And by the way, Kellogg's, I don't have the letter anymore. Um, I think my son has the doll. But if... I would love it if you'd send me the letter again. Um, so if you can, if you go to my website on W Karma Radio with Mary Beth Stern, which is a division of W Karma here, Rocker Room, which we do for kids every weekend. Um, I would love to have that letter again, but I certainly did appreciate it. I remember it had designs on it, everything and it said from Kellogg's of Battle Creek, Michigan. I'll never forget it. I was so excited. It was that was like the most exciting thing that ha could happen to a little girl and it was just I was just thrilled. And I still I still love Kellogg's cereal to this day. So um and if you do want to be a writer, remember to always read because if you, a very uh, writer that I like told me and his other constant readers said, you can't re write if you don't read. And I agree with that. I don't think it's always the case, but I think it has a lot to do with it. And reading is more than fundamental. It's fun because unlike TV's great and movies are great, but they all start with this. Without this, you wouldn't have them. Without writers, you don't have anything. Right, the pen is mightier than the sword. They are writers rule. So it is really cool to be a writer. And I am thrilled that I can write. Um, I may not be the best writer in the world, but I'm pretty good. And it took me, but I grew up with such great influences, Alfred Hitchcock, Rod Serling, uh, Ray Bradbury, Stephen King. Um, there were so many of them, too many to me mention. And so many great stories and old movies that I watched that were just, I remember them like they were yesterday. And the writers were fabulous. Special effects are great, but they will never replace great writing. And as long as you can 
you can always picture in a in a book what the characters will look like as you get older you don't books don't always have pictures um like they do now and pictures are great and there's nothing being an artist is fabulous my mom for instance had that talent i'm not as talented as her as an artist my friend melissa who is on this station with me is a better artist than i am i'm more abstract but um that's the great thing about art again it's whatever you want it to be it doesn't have to look like hers it doesn't it doesn't have to look like his because it's an expression of you. And there's nobody else like you in the whole world. You're unique and you're special. And just like the trees in the sun, you have a right to be here. And don't let anybody tell you any differently. And you are terrific. Okay? And I just want to say hi to all my friends hi everybody hi if i don't i don't call your names today because i don't have my magic mirror with me but i will next time but i still can see all when i close my eyes i can see all of you and i can feel all of you and i certainly hope you've enjoyed the story hour and follow, coming up next will be some great old retro cartoons let me tell you what that word means that's the word of the day today retro we're gonna do a Pee Wee herman thing okay when i say retro you go yay okay so that's our word of the day okay we're gonna do that for Pee Wee herman i used to love his show Pee Wee's playhouse okay so the word of the day is retro okay yay okay so <laughs> Retro is, what that means is it's kind of like old time. It happened a long time ago. It's maybe when your mommy was a little girl or your grandmother was a little girl or, you know what I mean? So that's what retro means, basically. And that's, those are the cartoons I watched when I was little. And they're really pretty fun and cool. There were cartoons by the Beatles, which were singers, and the Jackson 5. And we're going to, since it's Black History Month, we're going to run the Jackson 5 cartoons. Okay? And uh, for this week. All right? And happy Black History Month to all my friends out there. And any books you can pick up on that, absolutely read it. I did my thesis. A thesis is another big word for uh, kind of like a big story you do when you're in, in college, right? And they want you to write about it. And I wrote about Dr. King's speech. And it was just great. So always uh, when you don't have anything to do on rainy days and if the cable goes out, but you always have your computer. Well, we didn't have that. <laughs> so, but once in a while, pick up a book. You will not regret it. Trust me. And you'll learn a lot of things on it. And this month, it being Black History Month, you can find a lot of great books on, um, on just very special people. And we're all very special no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, and no matter what we look like, okay? So with that, let me tell you that you're all terrific. I love being with you. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you here next week on W Karma Radio, Rocker Room, and I am Mary Beth, and I love you. And you take care of yourself, kids. And I will see you back here next weekend. Bye-bye now. Have a great weekend.